November 3rd, 2021. Habcast 176, episode 176. Let's go. Happy Wednesday, you guys. Happy hump day. Yeah. Of course, I have a few things to share with you. An evening of reflection. Let's do it. Shall we? A white teacher is under investigation after showing up to school in blackface, the principal says, and for all of this, you know, blackface never goes over well, even when it's done in a known entertainment atmosphere. So why didn't you just quit? Just say it's the vaccine. <laughs> say, I don't want to get vaccinated. Say, I don't like them badass kids. Why would you just go in blackface? You could just put in your two weeks. It's the same thing. Like, yeah, a white high school teacher is on home assignment under a home assignment under investigation like he can't uh do a zoom meeting in blackface <laughs> you're punish you're, you're punishing him with a reward and under and under investigation after he showed up to teach in blackface according to the school principal how did you even get in the building like that or did you like go in the teacher's room who let you in the building with blackface on or did you have it just so many questions a a business teacher at Parkdale Collegiate Institute. This is a higher education, uh, a public high school. Oh, it's public high school. I thought it, it sounded like collegiate. Okay, so it's like a college prep. Uh, a public high school in Parkdale near Toronto, Ontario, joined the staff and students who are dressed up for Halloween. It's not even a good Halloween. It's not, it's never even a good Halloween uh, costume, according to a letter sent to parents. Uh, guardians and students last week from the school's principal, uh, Julie Ardell, but the teacher's choice of black paint made students in his class uncomfortable. One of his students who was not being named at his parents' request told CNN Tuesday, racism and racial tensions have been at the forefront of conversations in school board meetings and classrooms across the world. It was really uncomfortable and disgusting. Yeah, it was weird, definitely. The student said, because that's your teacher. You don't want to get kicked out of school for calling your teacher a fucking racist honky. Now, nah, man, but this is my show. I can. You racist fucking honky. I didn't really feel attacked because I'm not black. But like, even as a white person, I was like, this is totally gross. And that's definitely understandable if you're trying to like not be the part of the problem. If you're trying to not be the uh the part that alienates us from each other in professional and educational uh, settings. In her letter, Ardell said as soon as the incident was brought to their attention, they immediately took action by asking a teacher to wash their face as to not cause further. <laughs> the teacher has been placed on home assignment or removed from the school until an investigation has been completed. Ryan Bird of the Toronto School district uh, uh the toronto district school board told cnn disciplinary disciplinary action will be considered after uh the investigation christian college president fired over sexual assault allegation oh the flesh it's weak the president of georgetown college not that georgetown a private christian school in kentucky has been fired after allegations of sexual assault and inappropriate behavior was made against uh made against them by female employees just being weird man like you know like when we bought you in the when we bought you into this job we figured you for a man who had absolutely no interest in women now as soon as you get around all the other ladies you can't control yourself i told you to really <laughs> it's been very very sudden dr jonathan sands wise a vice president for the college told the daily beast he declined to share further details on the allegations out of respect for those 
hurt by Jones. Yeah, I never figured him as a man that would say anything to ladies other than hello. The college board of trustees terminated William A. Jones. Damn, not even a warning, but they put the guy, they just put the guy on blackface on like, yeah, wow, the college board uh, of trustees terminated William A. Jones' employment on Monday following the allegations which were made known to the administration on Sunday. Jones was accused of a sexual assault of a female college employee, inappropriate behavior with another female college. So he was just shooting his shot in all the wrong ways. <laughs> and other, if every time you take it, if every time you take a, uh, you, t- you, you go to at bat, it's a foul. If every time you go to at bat, it's a foul ball. It's not a strike. It's not a nothing. It's just a, uh, it's just a foul. Now, I mean, then you need to uh, reconsider your approach and other conduct uh, a violation in Jones' employment agreement with the college, according to a release from the school. The Board of Trustees launched an investigation speaking with relevant individuals, relevant individuals, and determined, yeah, and determined that the president had clearly broken his employment agreement. Leave the ladies alone. Like, look, when you come up in here, these are, and I know these are in the interviews when you come up here. Yeah, listen, there are a lot of ladies here on this campus. We're outnumbered two to one by women professionally and just uh, and just on the campus, period. Please, as a Christian school, we need you to keep it under wraps. Oh, the flesh is weak. <laughs> that the president had clearly broken his employment agreement with the college sands why said even without complete knowledge of the situation that was clear they decided at the time they had to terminate jones employment oh we can't have this <laughs> he was banging cocktail waitresses two at a time if you've seen the godfather you know that reference to protect those who are vulnerable uh the, the board's chairman robert l mills called a monday morning meeting of an executive committee which took immediate action to dismiss Jones later that day. The full board of trustees affirmed the move. Yeah, he's done. (laughs) Georgetown College does not tolerate violence or misuse of authority. Mills said in a statement, we hold our administrators, students, and faculty to, to the highest standards of moral and ethical conduct. He broke all those rules. Before Sunday, he didn't even make it to church and he was already out of it. <laughs> we are surprised and deeply disappointed by what we have learned. Jeez. Next up. We bought you in because you seem like the type that has absolutely no interest in the opposite sex or any sex for that matter. <laughs> you faked us. Oh, you faked us out. Father allegedly killed daughter's boyfriend for selling her into sex trafficking ring. I'm not a savage. I don't condone. I don't condone murder or yeah anything outside of uh, protecting your your family or your or your property. I'm not out here telling people to uh, murder folks. But after what the the world seen, that was a world uh, case with Brian Laundry. And how and how law enforcement handled it, and just on so many levels, that um, the temperature in this country in this country is that uh, now it's like if I trust you to take my daughter out, if I trust you to uh, date my daughter or whatever the relationship is, and that one time you come home and my daughter doesn't, I'm holding you accountable for your actions. Because we can't allow, uh, and I'm not going to beat up on law enforcement behind it, but that was a situation where they had the prime suspect, and instead of immediately seeking closure for the family, they ended up letting him slip through his fingers. And uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, as as a parent, you just don't want to see those type of things happen to your child. Father in Washington State has been accused of abducting a man and beating him to death with a cinder block after learning that he allegedly sold his daughter into a sex trafficking ring. Uh, John Eisenman is facing a first-degree murder charge for you to sell my loved one, my flesh and blood, like he or she is a piece of is a piece of meat 
or a piece of merchandise is enraging. Uh, John Eisenman is facing a first-degree murder charge in the death of his daughter's 19-year-old boyfriend, identified by the, spokes, the spokesman review as Andrew Sorensen. The 60-year-old suspect, suspect was taken into custody on October 29th, and he is being held in lieu of $1 million bond, according to a press release issued by the Spokane uh, Police Department on Monday. Uh, another article said that uh, that he had allegedly sold her into sex trafficking for a thousand dollars. So that's how much my daughter, that's how much my child was worth to you. A thousand dollars to people who are just going to treat her like uh, like, yeah, in, in a very horrible way. In October 2020, Eisenman was told his juvenile daughter was sold into a sex trafficking ring. So she wasn't even a uh, so she was a minor. Yeah, it was sold into a sex trafficking ring in the Seattle area, and that Sorensen may have been the one responsible for her sale, police said. Uh, he was able to rescue his daughter and get her back to Spokane uh, later later that same month. So, yeah, yeah, actionable intelligence, and he took action. It's not playing no games. I'm going to bring my girl back. How can you, how can you be mad at that man when... Eisenman learned Sorensen would be at a location in Airway Heights. He traveled to the area, then waited for the 19-year-old to arrive, which that, eh, it sounds like premeditated, but then at the same time, this is your, this is your child. So I would, I'm gonna, I would love to keep tabs on this to see how it plays out in court. Uh, they said he has no priors of like nothing violent or nothing like that. So during the encounter, Eisenman abducted the victim tying him up and placing him in the trunk of a vehicle. Eisenman subsequently assaulted the victim by hit him, hitting him in the head with a cinder block and then stabbed him repeatedly, causing his death. Jeez. After the homicide, Eisenman drove the vehicle to a remote area in North Spokane County and abandoned the car with the body still inside. Whoa, Sorensen's remains were not discovered until last month after authorities received a tip about a foul smell coming from an abandoned car on East Everett Avenue in Spokane on October 22nd. Police believe the victim was killed sometime in November 2020. Whoa! Talk about getting it done. <laughs> it's obviously, it's a horrible thing to happen. It's horrible for all parties involved. It is. But, uh, but the bright side is his daughter is fine. And, uh, and yeah, they found this guy. They found the guy that uh, was supposed to be involved in the crime after they made sure that the daughter was fine. If you like the show, subscribe and comment. Let me know you're rocking with your boy. Got a new mic. Let me know down in the bottom if I'm too loud. If, uh, if the new mic is cool, let me know. Arkansas man charged for buying Rolls Royce with $100 million dollars from fraudulent urine test <laughs> now you know you got that best friend that smoke hella weed and you always find you always want to know like well how did you get this job like you you smoked before you went to the interview you was high at the interview how did you get that good job this is how <laughs> yeah. there are people watching out for you if the price is right in Arkansas, a grand jury indicted a man who made $100 million from fraudulent urine tests and bought his own Rolls Royce. Wow, that's what I'm talking about. Billy Joe Taylor, who owns several medical testing laboratories in Arkansas, was charged uh, Tuesday with health care fraud. The jury indicted Taylor in connection to approximately $100 million in false billings for urine drug testing, COVID-19 testing, and other clinical laboratory services. He was just charge it to the insurance, and you're good. You're in there. Taylor used the profits to live a lavish lifestyle, including purchasing numerous luxury automobiles, including a Rolls Royce Wraith, as well as state as real estate, jewelry, guitars, other, lux <laughs> other luxury clothing item and items. Wow. According to the jury's indictment, Taylor had his laboratories collect consumers' private and personal information before using that information to submit claims to Medicare, requesting tests that medical providers had not ordered 
and that they were not performed on site. In some cases, Taylor's laboratory used the information of the deceased. Whoa. Taylor is charged. If there is a scam, it will be found. Taylor is charged with 16 counts of health care fraud and one count of engaging in a monetary transaction and criminal derived, uh, criminally derived property. Uh, the laboratory owner is now scheduled to appear before the U.S. District 23rd. Each count is punishable by a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison. He'll get a fine. You're not doing no real time. Who really got hurt? Taylor is only the latest in a long line of charges filed by the DOJ in an attempt to combat health care fraud related to COVID-19. Whoa. We are committed to protecting the American people and the critical health care benefits programs created to a system during this national emergency. And we are determined to hold those who exploit such programs accountable to the fullest extent of the law. <laughs> to the multiple health care fraud schemes charged today describe theft from American taxpayers through the exploitation of the national emergency. Hey, if, if you can't get a hold of him, hit me because I got that clean, I got that clean, clean, <laughs> said Deputy Attorney General Lisa O. Monaco after the initial complaint against uh, Taylor. These medical professionals, corporate executives, and others allegedly took advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic to line their own pockets instead of providing needed health care services during this unprecedented time in our country. Fair enough. There is no argument there because there were people making money hand over fist and still are. Fun show. Fun show. Fun show. That will mean next time I'm going to wrap this up. Have a good evening, y'all. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Adios.